and welcome to the Speedworth Banger Championship of the World here at Wimbledon Stadium in London. Now, throughout the programme, we'll be bringing you guaranteed close racing, high-speed action and frequent collisions, all of which should definitely not be missed. But for now, enough from me. Let's go into trackside for full coverage of Madness, Mayhem, Bowen, Motor Racing. Over to you. Thanks, Sarah. The car's then ready for action in this, the first of the two last chance heats. The winner of this will go through into the world final, and therefore it's more than just a support race. It has far more importance than we've had in previous years. The front of the grid, Dave Gentini with the Grada, the hearse of Carl Sewell alongside him. The pace car pulls off. You've got Simon Byrne behind them in 172 on the second row of the grid. The green flag drops away. They go already. There's carnage. The hearse gets turned around. Number 61 there, Carl Totem, gets caught up in it. James Bully in 363 goes backwards into the fence. Dale Hughes, 27, he's already involved. And in the background, the track blocked, I think, now 700. Mark Glanister gets steamed there into the wreckage. The survivors battle on. 102 head for the centre green. Dale Hughes there goes through. Under the scoreboard, somebody else in the fence there. And you can see there, the pits turn. There's just about a way through. 94 goes charging into the fence. Treble six, Mark Holdsworth, former world champion back in 1995. Battles on there with Graham Jewell in 320. Mark Glanister has got himself free of the wreckage. So too is Dave Gentini in 314. Mark Holdsworth again getting caught up there as he turns his way underneath the scoreboard. Onto the back straight he goes. 414, Neil Peters. Doom being given a helping hand as he turns his way under the scoreboard as well now. Mark Holdsworth battles on. Simon Byrne behind him. There's James Bully in 363. And a big steam there on the home straight. 213 it is being sorted out. That's Rob Clark. And look at that, Marcus Goldsmith clambering out of what was a Mark II Granada that's left hanging off the wires. It looks as though Neil Peters has followed him in in 4-1-4. Still they come, big T-bone there on Doom from James Buddy in 363. Well, Marcus Goldsmith is fine, but the Mark II Granada absolutely destroyed. It's left hanging off the wires. James Buddy is about to abandon ship, and so too there is Neil Peters. Drivers are OK, just in the nick of time out there gets Elliot Dobson careers in in 7-3-8. That stopped Dave Gentini as well, who was well up. Elliot Dobson tries to sort himself out. We've got Carl Sewell on the way in the hearse. There's the jacking train. Look, you can see all the carnage. And bang! Right into the side, possibly even into the driver's door there. Of Elliot Dobson goes Carl Sewell's hearse. That's left the back of the hearse. Absolutely gagging for a shot. 306 clips him. Graham Jewell spins around in 320. The track virtually blocked. Now, the idea is you're meant to forge your way through, not take to the infield there. That's the leader, Mitchell Mills in 159. But we've got a red flag. Well, Marcus, uh, nice to see you've got out of that alive. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. And what happened then? Well, I just got picked up coming in the bend and got took in. End of story. <laughs> That's banger racing. So is your car a complete write-off now, I take yeah, it? Yeah, load it up, take it home. The restart underway, the chaos continues. Now, remember, the winner of this goes through into the World Championship. Mitchell Mills ain't going to be it now. Mark Holdsworth disposes of him. Holdsworth, former world champion, wants to get into the big race tonight. Down the back, straight he goes. The man from Inca Race in the Midlands in the Jaguar then, swinging his way through now, that final turn on the lap. But a quick look up front, it's 7-3-2, Mark Bryant, who's now the leader. Another one pulls up onto the centre green. Well, we started with, what, 30-odd cars, and but a small handful survive. There is the leader, 7-3-2, Mark Bryant, multiple figure of eight world champion. He's never won the oval version. He might be able to tonight, assuming he can win this race and put himself into the world final itself. He's got a better chance than others. You can see the state of some of the cars. It's all gone a bit tamer, but many of them showing the skulls of battle of earlier on. One more lap to go this time around for 7-3-2, Mark Bryant. He's the leader. 300 there, John Ailes, the Ringwood man, fourth at the moment. He ain't going to get through, though, to the world championship tonight. Down the back straight, though, now goes Mark Bryant. It's going to be a win for 7-3-2, and that's going to be vital. It's going to put him into the World Championship later on this evening. 159, Mitchell Mills comes through ahead of him on the road. Dave Gentini in the background, but it's a win for 7-3-2, Mark Bryant. And that is going to make him a qualifier now for tonight's all-important 2001 World Championship. Yeah, I'm very pleased with the result, but I've just pulled up over there and my engine seized up, so I've got to change the engine now before I can get into the world. Is that bad news for you right now, then? Um, if I can find an engine, I'll do it. It's not a problem. Have you got the team on hand to help you, then, this evening? Yeah, I've just shouted across the dog track to uh, find an engine real quick. And did you manage to get caught up in the carnage over there at the end of the track? I managed to weave my way through it. I hit a couple of cars to get them out of the way, but I managed to get through it all right. The second of the last chance races then, about to get underway. Let's see who's going to join Mark Bryan by qualifying from this one. 
The car's being sent off on the rolling lap. 206, Dave King and Treble 7, Trevor Luff from Northampton at the front of the grid. Dave King, former English champion, vastly experienced driver. He can rod, he can wreck, depending on how the mood takes him, and he's starting in an ideal position to get through as retard Roy. Roy Bramner gets spun aside even before the race has started, even before the green flag. His Jaguar gets turned aside. Now the races go. Let's see whether it's as destructive as the first race was. Well, already Mickey Stradwick has gone. 245, Jack France takes to the infield. Another one plows off as well. And Dave King leads then as they make their way down the back straight for the first time. Roy Bramley trying to get himself clear of the fence. One or two more being delayed as they battle their way round. But it's Dave King up front at the moment. Through come the rest. There's Trevor Luff in Trevor 7. There's John Dodge in the background as well. Under the scoreboard goes Trevor Luff onto the back straight now. More of them queuing up. Look at that! Roy Bramley absolutely followed it in big style. Kevin Thurlow latched onto the back of him, amongst others. Rated following there, but retard Roy is going no further. He looks somewhat stunned, to say the least. The Jag tries to recover. John Dodge gets followed in as well there by Alan Hunt in 5 to 8. Jethro's car then gets knocked aside. John Dodge running as 200 rather than his regular 201. Tries to get out of the fence, but here's a replay as Kevin Thurlow latches onto the back with a bit of help of Roy Bramley, follows him into the fence. It snaps the Jaguar up onto two wheels, goes Kevin Thurlow. Winnie in 54 piles in, then Mr. Mag, Keith Reynolds in 260. Others force away through the track, just about clear. And on battle the survivors. Another one into the fence there, and more contact as cars bounce off one another. I think it was Ken Angel in 265 that was the one that launched himself onto the infield. Another shot on the back of John Dodge's car, that's from 66 there, Mark Rogers. On go the rest of them. Drivers trying to sort themselves out, the track getting slippery, Mark Thomas in the Triumph 2000 estate goes through. And there, Mr. Mag, Keith Reynolds, the man that puts together the fabled three-litre magazine, the ultimate fanzine for Bangor Racing that covers the south of England, just like Northern Steam looks after the north of England Bangor Racing world. And Keith Reynolds going well at the moment. There's not that much damage done to the car. It's not smoking. He's going well. More of them there heading for the fence. Mark Thomas with the Triumph disposes of 108. That's Steve Brown, the auto speed driver. Not too much damage done to Steve Brown's car. He should be able to rejoin in a moment. 117, Anthony Pitt from the Isle of Man gets followed in by Jethro this time. Now, can he back off? Let's see. Yep, he can find reverse. The car's still mobile. Jethro rejoins. And now Anthony Pitt tries to join in as well. Well, the car will go backwards, just about. Now he's got himself in the middle of the road. It wasn't a great idea. Backwards is fine. Forwards, a bit more of a drama for him, seemingly. More ahead for the fence. Jack France in 2-4-5 battles his way through. Anthony Pitt still trying to get himself back into the race. And all he's managed to do now is make himself a sitting target in the middle of that scoreboard bend. One or two more find the fence. 117 continues to smoke his way back into the race if he can. 260 Keith Reynolds and 206 Dave King, the English champion of years past, gets him out of the way. And King, he battles his way now onto that back straight once again. Now Dave King up front at the moment. Is he heading for a place in the World Championship? Not only is he up front, he's also got pretty much an unscathed car. More than can be said for others. Mark Watkins heading for the fence. Number three, Phil Stevens there, the PRI driver, clatters his way in as well. Mark Watkins should be able to rejoin in 813. It looks as though Phil Stevens may have got himself hooked over the wires there. What's left of Jethro's car smokes its way round, but there is the race leader, Dave King in 206. We've seen him get rid of Keith Reynolds already. He's not that far behind him again to have to lap him. More cars going off in the background there. There is Keith Reynolds, and latching onto the back of his game is Dave King. He spun him aside once. Keith Reynolds trying to keep going. He goes one side of Anthony Pitt, round the other side there goes Dave King. Whoa, straight off there with a bit of help from Mark Thomas. Goes number 39, Steve McAvoy. He finds Retard Roy's stricken Jaguar. That acts as a cushion as there. 0-5, Carlos Perez from the Blues Boys. The Stoke Base driver goes through. 206, Dave King still leads. He makes his way now down once again towards the scoreboard bend more carnage there and look at that upside down is Mark Rogers in the fence having been well followed in there Dean French Carlos Perez arrives on the scene parks up to shield the upturned car rated follow in there and you can see the ferocity with which it was employed by Mark Rogers it's launched him upside down not surprisingly the red flags come out the big cheer you can hear is because the drivers have clambered out unscathed wow Ken Angel in 265 there pulling onto the center of the circuit 
Now the race will be restarted. There are sufficient laps left to merit it there with the smoke and the water and the liquid dribbling out of the car. That's Mark Rogers up turn Mark to Granada. Come on to the marshals, give us a hand. We can right this, get it out of the way and get the race back underway. I'll probably leave Dean French's car where it is. The well-snapped Mark II Granada nearest us. And Mark Rogers' car doesn't look that bad. He might try and get that out for the DD later in the night. Green flag wave, though. The race back underway. Now, Dave King leads, but with the stoppage, the advantage in built up had been eroded completely by Jack France. And there they are, look together, nose to tail, onto the back straight. Now, is Jack France going to wreck or is he going to rob? Let's see. He wants to get into the world final. He needs to keep a fresh car and therefore limited damage now is pretty important. What he can't afford to do is start taking pot shots at Dave King and risk his own car for later in the night. This might turn out now to be more of a hot rod race rather than a banger race. There in the background, Mark Watkins makes contact with the parked car. Mark Thomas spins off as well. Carlos Perez for the Blues Boys team turning his way now onto the back straight. But up front, it's still this battle between Dave King on the inside and 245 Jack France on the outside. Through they come. You can see at the moment there's very little contact between the two. They both know they are just a handful of laps away from qualifying for the world final and they want to keep the cars as intact as it's possible. And Dave King has done a great job so far of escaping pretty much most of the damage. Jack France looks quicker though. He latches onto the back of him now, going down the back straight, tries the outside line. Through the turn they come. For the animals team, 245 Jack France looking for a way past Seaside of Dave King side by side as they go past the start marshal. Jack France now powers his way through into the lead. Can he hang on to it? Dave King might from the inside there try and turn him out of the way, but onto the back straight they go. He takes a shot at Jack France, but Jack hangs on to it. 245 Jack France now looking as though he's on target to qualify for the world final. Two more laps still to run. 647 there, Danny Verrill's being given a nudge by 265 Ken Angel. Angel hits a parked car. Jack France has to force his way through stricken traffic on the pits bend as well. And Jack France now starts the last lap. He's managed to pull away from Dave King. Half a lap to go now. 245 Jack France liquid falling out of the bottom of the Granada, but his Mark II is going to serve him well and get him into the world final. He's got one more corner to go. And Jack France now for 245 turning his way onto the home straight. Checkered flag at the ready. It's a win for 245 Jack France, and that's good enough to get him into the world final. Congratulations, Jack. Just managed to get past Kingy there in the last few uh, laps. Yeah, thank you. I didn't think I was going to do it. I thought he was a little bit quicker than me, but I found a better line and got by, so. And obviously pleased with that result, taking you through to the final tonight. Yeah, yeah. I only just missed out on the qualifying points anyway, so it's, it's good. So how do you think you're going to fare tonight, then? I uh, probably just get squashed in the final. It's a bit mayhem, that race, you know, you never know what's going to happen. OK, well, congratulations, Dave, on reaching the final. How much do you want to win tonight? Um, I really want to win it this year, because every other year I've led it for so long, and this year I'd really like it. Your best place was fourth in the 2000 Championship. That's not bad going, is it? Uh, no, it's the first time I ever finished it as well, so it was real good. Well, while they're clearing the track, we're going to take a short break, but do join us very soon for all the action here at Wimbledon Stadium and the 2001 World Banger Championship. Welcome back to Wimbledon Stadium here in London. Well, let's go straight over for all the action to race side commentary. And this is the one they all want to win, the prestigious Speedworth World Banger Championship. It started back in 1974 and this a race that everybody on the grid wants to win. The atmosphere as ever at Speedworth's Wimbledon Stadium is second to none, and the level of preparation of the cars as well has had even the most ardent banger fans frothing at parts all night. The front of the grid, Mark Wellen lining up alongside 82 Paul Tompkins. The second row of the grid, the Mark III Granada Hearst, the first one ever to be raced by former world champion Alan Reid. There he is, speedy in 88, and the cars have two rolling mats ready to get this race underway. Immaculate paint jobs, a feature of this race. There's almost this unofficial competition to try and outdo everybody else. And as ever, plenty of ultra smart cars for the next two minutes or so before the green flag drops and all hell breaks loose. Number 60, Shane Windsor in there as well. 536, Annette Nichols, the best lady banger driver there is, and a very tough competitor indeed. The pace car then gets out of harm's way. The green flag is ready. The 2001 Speedworth Bangor World Championship then is about to get underway. The lights on red will go to green any second and already we've got cars in the fence as 153 Chris Crowlin from the Isle of Man finds the fence but away they go officially now. 
Number four, Dave Wilde, turns his way through. Novi's Hurst was spun in the background. 37, Phil Waspit ploughs into 153. 200 there, Steve Farrell facing the wrong way already. Another of the Blues Boys drivers in trouble. 49, Billy King for the RDC promotion goes through. 37, spun aside again. 245, Jack France, we saw him win. The second of the last chance races, through he goes. 62 there, Steve Kanetz, the Belgian driver up against the fence. And 382, the reigning champion, Danny Hunt, goes past him. Number 60, Shane Windsor being given a helping hand from the hearse of Carl Gray. And now the wrecking starts. Boxer Jack gets bonded in. Graham Haywood, the Buxton driver, follows him in. Number seven, Colin Farley involved in that as well. Double world champion. Graham Haywood in 295, bouncing off the back of Boxer Jack. More of them plough in as the circuit's width is narrowed considerably. And there's Carl Gray in the hearse. Nobby cannoning off the side of one of the Granadas there. They all survive. No, no, they don't, because there, Mark Bryan gets followed in in racing fashion by Nobby. Fantastic shot, and that's got rid of the former world figure of eight champion. The driver's OK, the car is snapped, and Mark Bryant is out. Keith Painter, 46, Little Maverick turns his way through with a Mark III Granada. 384, John Golden finds parked cars, then gets a shot off 416, Mark Smith as well for his pains. Colin Farley involved in that, losing time number four, Dave Wilde spins, and so too there does 49, Billy King. A pair of them go off onto the grass, they should be able to rejoin. Meantime, the battles continue, 45, Simon Tabiner there gets fenced, he should be able to rejoin from that, but he's going to lose a lot of time. 348's on his show, well, the mush goes through, the rest of them battle on, including 82, Paul Tompkins being spun aside, and Mark Welland has gone as well, they were the top two, they've both been spun around, but Paul Tompkins recovers quicker. 82, Paul Tompkins then, Winkle, he leads, Mark Welland drops back as the reigning world champion, 382, Danny Hunt takes a shot off Alge, number 97, Dave Allen. Big, big moment for Dave Allen, trying to sort himself out, he gets a big, big T-bone there from 37, Fizz clobbers him at the first corner, 5-3-6, Annette Nichols tries to battle her way round as 41, Willie Scoyles gets rid of Lee Cleland in 2-1-8. Another former world figure of eight champion, Lee Cleland. And now Willie Scoyles gets spun aside as well. This is the 16th time Willie Scoyles has been in the Bangor World Championship. But at the moment, he's dropping back all the time after that spin. 46, Keith Painter, Maverick, disposes there of 199, Phil Powell. And then he gets Jack Frowles on his boot lid for his troubles. Down to the back straight they go now. We've lost a fair few of them, but there are still plenty running as Mark Welland is sorted out once again. He spins aside, Annette Nichols spins in 5.36, and Martin Dalton has gone there in 58. Goes on off, Oda and turn the car around, he should be able to rejoin. Eventually, he's got more parked cars, Oda try and wriggle past first. 3.82, Danny Hunt gets sideways, he finds the parked cars as well. The world champion, the reigning world champion is delayed as there. Billy King in 49 once again, coming into contact with Dave Wilde. We saw the pair of them spin off earlier on. Here's a replay, you can see Dave Wilde latches onto the back there of Billy King. The back of Billy's pink Mark II Granada comes round, clobbers Mark Bryant's car, sorts himself out and tries to battle on. Colin Farley, two times a world champion, turning his way through. Now, he lost time earlier on, but he's fought back very well indeed. Dave Wilde in number four there, letting Richard Beer in 254 through on the inside. Mark Smith, 416, saloon stock car driver occasionally there, going through behind them. 416, one of the smarter cars as they come through. Colin Farley, though, there, looking for a way past the reigning world champion. He gets past Danny Hunt without too much trouble. 58, Martin Dalton gets shoved aside once again. Let's try and work out who else is still running and who else could be a threat. 33, Gary Madrick, another former world champion. He's still moving. He won the title in 1997, and Little Maverick as well. Now, he's managed to escape most people's attention so far. Don't rule him out, nor 120, Shane Brown, another very good driver. So too is 264 Mark Welland, much travelled, omnipresent racer. Now he gets spun at the first turn. Colin Farley, Keith Painter, Jack France, they all go piling past him. And look also for 22 there, Dave Vincent, another of the RDC drivers. Shane Brown though, 120, possibly now the dark horse for this race. Very, very highly rated driver. Comes from the auto speed promotion, Richard Beer there, ploughs into the back of 147. Andy Davis then gets steamed by Mark Smith in 416. Through goes 22, Dave Vincent, Shane Brown in 120. They just about managed to wriggle clear there of all the parked cars. Annette Nichols has gone into that as well in 536. Mark Smith there rejoining. The race quietening down a little, but not by much. 199, Phil Powell battling his way by there. 416, Mark Smith back into the race. Gives a shot onto the back of 199, who in turn hits Shane Davis in 158 and 264. Mark Well, and they're coming back into the fray once more. Phil Powell's about to go onto the infield. Not by his own volition, but by a shot from the back end. 
Gary Madgwick there steams into the back of 254 Richard Beer, pushing him out of the way. Dave Wilde goes through in number four. Now that takes in effect Gary Madgwick, I would have thought now, out of a possible winning position here. 158, Shane Davies being given a bit of help by Keith Painter. Maverick in 46, onto the back straight he goes. Shane Brown going well, there is Maverick. He's trying to find a way past the Toyota crown there of Gary Madgwick, former world champion. And all of a sudden, ah, I was going to say he slows right down. Red flags we have, that's the reason they've all slowed. There's a wheel, I think, that's come loose of someone's car. And so that can be retrieved from harm's way. So the race is being suspended. Now this gives everybody a chance to bunch up, except Maverick pulls onto the infield. Is that the end of him? Let's see. If it, yes, it is. Steam and smoke. That could be the end for 46. Well, the cars are going to be lined up once again in lap sheet order. 147 there, Andy Davies tries to coax the Mark II estate back into life with a bit of help from Gary Madgwick. And Colin Farley being put at the front of the queue. Now, I thought he'd lost more time than that earlier on, but the officials reckon at the moment that Colin Farley is leading 10 laps for the restart. Colin Farley, Keith Painter is going to take the restart. That's good news for him in 46, and away we go once again. The 2001 Bangor World Championship here at Wimbledon Stadium is back underway. The green flag is waved. Willie Scoyles in 41 there, tries to set about 120. Shane Brown, Scoyles fifth at the moment. Colin Farley leads there, 46. Keith Painter, another man to watch. Shane Brown goes third, Scoyles goes fourth now in 41. Over the line goes Colin Farley. There's not too much damage to that car. He should be able, I would have thought now, to break clear of those behind him. Willie Scoyles tries to find a way through on the inside of Shane Brown and now that these drivers are within only a few laps at the end of the race you can see that the wrecking has stopped and there's a bit more rodding going on they now starting to race for position Colin Farley doing his best to get away as he comes over the line Maverick still chasing him then in second place now look back what's going on between Scoyles and Brown Willie Scoyles goes third now Jack France in 2-4-5 is fourth now, can Willie Scoyles do anything about second place man Keith Painter or there, Colin Farley, the race leader? Through they come towards us once again. Colin Farley won in 1996, he won again in 1998. Can he win again in 2001? At the moment, the answer looks like it could well be yes. 120, Shane Brown, not seeming at the moment to have the pace that he needs. Jack Francis ahead of him in 245. Colin Farley with bat markers ahead of him comes towards us. There is 120 Shane Brown going wide. Is Jack France clipping a parked car? That's going to delay him. He battles his way on. Now, has that done for the suspension of the car? He's still going, but he's dropped a fair way back as Shane Brown tries now to sort out 355. That's the Ringwood racer, Mark Simmons, onto the back. Straight they go, but Colin Farley is still clear at the moment. He got involved in a pile up early on before that red flag came out. But if he was able to claw back the time, and he genuinely is leading this race, he's done a fantastic job. He's up front at the moment then. Car seven, Colin Farley onto the back straight, he goes once again. Now what's going on behind him for second place? Is it still Maverick or is Willie Scoyles, the man that won the London Open Championship here back in February? Is he up into second place? Let's wait and see. Through they come. There is Colin Farley up front at the moment. Second now is Willie Scoyles. Yes, he's done it. He's got himself ahead of Maverick. Now, years ago, there used to be great rivalry between the two speed with factions, the East Anglians and the Southerners, as there Mark Simmons goes ploughing off and gets clobbered by Shane Brown as well. Well, these days, I think Speedworth has united purely to stop the visitors. Is it going to be a Speedworth Southern or East Anglian win, though? There's the replay. Mark Simmons sent off into Mark Bryant's car. He bounces back onto the circuit and then takes another shot from Shane Brown. Wait for the impact. There it is. You can see the driver getting jolted around inside the car, and Shane Brown goes through. Three eight two, Danny Hunt, the winner last year, one of the visiting drivers to take the championship in recent years. Well, this year it looks as though Speedworth is going to have one of its own promotion drivers take the world championship. But which one is it going to be? It's a southerner up front at the moment. There he is, number seven, Colin Farley, chased by the East Anglian, Willie Scoyles. And Colin Farley now coming through towards us. Is this going to be another championship for him? He looks behind him to see where the opposition is. Past the wreckage there under the scoreboard band and now onto the back straight goes Colin Farley. He's done some lightning rod racing and 1300cc saloon stock car racing in recent seasons, but it's Bangers where he's made his name and where he's had most of his success as well. Jack France there dispensed onto the infield. Somebody else in trouble. Paul Tompkins, 82 there, getting spun aside by Mark Simmons in 355 and coming through with what? One more lap to go on the lap board there. Colin Farley is still clear of everybody else. Another look behind him. Is he going to be the first person ever to win three times? So let's see. He comes through now. 
One back marker ahead, the checkered flag is going to be at the ready. There it is, Colin Farley comes across the line to win the 2001 Bangor World Championship here at Wimbledon Stadium. Willie Scoyles comes home in second place. And still the wrecking continues, there's more steam and smoke settling there on the pits bend. Colin Farley has done it for the third time. Number seven, Colin Farley, victorious then here at Wimbledon Stadium. A Speedwith driver wins the Speedwith Promoted Championship and a Southern driver to boot. Colin Farley pulls the car up. The rest of the place men come home as soon as the lap sheets are completed. Then the red flags will go out to complete the race. 245 Jack France, Mark Smith in 416 complete their race as well. Willie Spoils in 41 there battling his way down that back straight. Willie having taken second place. And a very sideways 41. Willie celebrating second as he comes through. But Colin Farley victorious then. Willie Scoyles second here in the 2001 Bangor World Championship. And as ever, an absolutely fantastic race. Shane Brown there has been spun out just before the red flags came out, I think. And so Colin Farley, 1996 winner, 1998 winner, 2001 winner as well. Well, the world champion in 96 and 98 and now 2001. How do you feel about that? Uh, it's pretty good, pretty good. And a good race for you there? It was a good race, but it was a long 10 laps. So once they restarted it and you knew you was winning, it was a long 10 laps. And it's your 13th consecutive win since 1989. You must be pretty committed to this sport. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a hard habit to break, definitely. And you're not too happy on crashing, are you? Here you like to go out there and win. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I do like a crash, but it's a time for crashing, isn't it? And a time for winning. Was it your intention tonight to come out and win? You've got to enter the race with the intention of winning and believe that you can win it. Otherwise, you know, well, it's just you've got to try, haven't you? <laughs> and how's the car? It's smoking out the back there. Are we safe standing here? No, that's fine, that's fine, yes. Yeah, that's normal. OK, well, congratulations, well done. Your 16th world final, you must be delighted to come second. I'm very pleased, yeah. I've had a third place, I've had a second, so next time, 17th time lucky, maybe. <laughs> and at the start of the restart, you're actually fifth, so you managed to get second place, so that's some going, isn't it? Yeah, just to run the flag, really, so it's very slippery that time, very slippery. And do you think the man who, ma who won does the hub to win? He's, already tw he's won it twice before, so I don't think there's anybody else who's won it three times in a row, so yeah, he deserves it, yeah. Good driver. But you're not too disappointed that you didn't quite take the title, or are you? Well, yeah, I'm always disappointed that I haven't won, but I'm first of the losers, aren't I? Well, due to a steward's inquiry, there has, in fact, been a change to the results. And I'm joined now by Roy Eaton. Roy, what's, that, what's happened exactly? This is, this is not very normal for this type of thing, actually, because these races are so hectic, um, with cars staying in the fence for a while and then coming back out. And Colin Farley was one of those. He's an ex-world champion, very quick. But when we've looked back at the videos, which we do, we always give ourselves a period to just check the videos from each angle. And Colin was actually out on the pit corner for over a lap. And he started 32, I think, on the grid. Um, Willie starting 10th on the grid means that there was no way that he could have, um, you know, could have lost that amount of time. So unfortunately, um, we looked at the video with Colin, and he, he's put his hands up and he thinks that, that, you know, it's possible that he wasn't in that position. But good news for Willie then. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it, Willie has been so many years. He's been second, third, second, third, and this, uh, this is good. Really brilliant, especially for East Anglia. And Colin is actually admitting then that he probably was at fault there. He, he knows there's a doubt. So, he, I mean, he, he's not he's not put his hands up and said that, uh, you know, that he, he's unsure. And, and he realises that there was no way Willie was out. We've got no evidence to say Willie was out at all. Um, so Willie had a clean race as far as he concerned. But so this hard luck to Colin, I'm afraid. OK, well, thanks for taking the time to explain that to us. Well, you, you thought you'd come second, but no, you took the first place and you now are the banger champion of the world. You must be absolutely delighted with that. I'm absolutely over the moon. I just can't, it hasn't sunk in. It's just fantastic. And was it a surprise to you or did you think you had actually won it? I knew in my own mind that I thought Colin was not in the position that they'd given him. And, and then just so I got out of the car, everyone else confirmed that. And you've waited a long time for this, haven't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, a long while. Well, well done. It's absolutely terrific news. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us. <laughs> So, the 2001 Bangor world champion is Willie Scoyles, the East Anglian driver to a fantastic reception. He's been trying for, what, 16 years to do this, and finally it's happened for him. A very successful and much-travelled Bangor racer who has done a lot to support Speedworth over the years is this year's world